Welcome to our CA Football 12 Teams in 12 Days Season Preview. Today, we take a look at the Stony Brook Seawolves, and to help us learn more about the Seawolves, their play-by-play -play voice, Johnny Wincott. Johnny, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Johnny, Stony Brook just won in three last season in that shortened spring season, dealt with a lot of injuries, but they did close with a win over their rivals in New Albany. What do you feel like, if anything, they were able to take away from the spring? Well, uh, you know, the way that Chuck Priori was looking at it going into that spring season wasn't exactly, hey, let's play the six games, then let's play the next fall season. He was trying to lump everything together as one big season. So, and I guess this will hold true for probably 11 out of the 12 teams in the conference is your freshmen aren't really freshmen. They've had that experience of playing, not just in an extended training camp, but in that shortened four game sample size. So going into the year, I think you have some guys who in a typical sense would be a little bit more fresh than usual, but they're going to have some more, some more of a young veteran presence, if that makes sense this year. I know things are a little bit uh, fecocted given everything that had happened, but I think that they're going to have a more experienced, younger group, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Let's start with a look at the offense. And certainly it, uh, it begins with a very experienced quarterback and Ty Kel Fields. And Everybody knows also that Stony Brook is a team that has, has been great at running the ball over the years and the return of Tyson Lawton and a pretty big offensive line led by All-American Cal Nunez. You would think that that could continue. How do you see this group playing out? Yeah, let's, let's give the Hog Molly some credit. We'll start on the offensive line, which I'd have to say is probably the most experienced group this year for Stony Brook, which, as you mentioned, bodes well for a team that likes to, to ground and pound. Uh, you got the All-American and Kyle Nunez, Anthony Catapano, uh, Cameron Lucas coming back. So a lot of veteran presence, guys with experience on that offensive line. Now to go along with that, a bevy of tailbacks. You mentioned Tyson Lawton, who will likely be the feature back. You know, the uh, second leading rusher as a freshman in 2019, the leading rusher last year. Granted, again, in that small four game sample size, but he'll be joined by a veteran in Savad Neckett, who's versatile, could line up as a wide receiver. And then you got the young guys from New York, Jaden Cook, Jaden Turner, and uh, I think you'll probably see a little bit of Roland Dempster there as well. So while Ty Sunlawton will likely be your feature back, there's a lot of young talent there for Stony Brook and a team that likes to hand the ball off. Uh, you also noted Ty Kel Fields, third year quarterback now, third year starter, I should say. So he's kind of been there, done that, has shown that he's capable with the legs, with his arm as well. But the way that this Stony Brook offense operates, you know, they're not gonna need him to throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns. You know, they probably just prefer, you know, good veteran presence, mistake-free football, kind of lead some of those younger guys down the field. Switch to the other side of the ball, and Stony Brook's defense has been known over the years for its aggressive attacking style. Certainly a guy in Casey Williams on the end that uh, fits that mold and can get into the backfield, and then some experience at linebacker with Reggie Demanche. Um, How good can this unit be, and, and, and what do you see as some of the strengths for this group? I'm glad you noted those two guys in particular because they're going to need some some guys to step in and, and fill those big shoe roles. You know, they lose Sam Camara, team's leader in sacks for you know X amount of years. Uh, they lose Augie Contressa, and they lose T.J. Morris and three guys who really were key cogs in that defensive system for four plus years. Um, obviously, that happens for good reason. They're off to NFL trading camp, but when they leave. You got to have other guys come and step up. So you mentioned Casey Williams, who will likely be, you know, the guy down on the front. Uh, Reggie Demanche leading a good core of linebackers. You also have a couple of youngsters and Chris Campbell and Tyler King, who had a very good, you know, four game shortened 2020 season. And then in the back end, you got guys like Akil Leyland, who's a senior, who only played three games in 2020, but he led the team with 24 tackles. So there's certainly guys with talent. Um, I think it's just tough to tell you know, in a four game sample size, who's going to step up and be the next leaders of the Stony Brook Seawolves team. I think a full season will certainly give a chance at that. Let's take just a quick look at uh, special teams because they're always key. Any standouts that you see both in the either in the kicking game or the return game? Uh, it'll be familiar faces for Stony Brook. Same punter, Mitchell Wright, ambidextrous kicker. Uh, you'll have Gugliamello as their kicker going with the field goals. Uh, Tyson Lawton, uh, Hunter Hayek, Jaden Turner, some form of those three will likely be your returners. It's a Stony Brook team, though, that quietly blocked four kicks during that four-game season. Three of them came from Anthony Del Negro. So uh, if you're looking for someone to maybe make a play on special teams, Anthony Del Negro is for sure your guy for the Seawolves. 
Let's take a, a look at the overall picture. Uh, this is a team that wasn't uh, hasn't been long since they were in the playoffs and and, and a, a kind of a consistent top twenty five team. What will it take for Sonny Brook to return to that level this season? Uh, you know, on the offensive end, and this might sound you know self explanatory for any football team or coach at any level, but mistake free football, and especially when you're a team that predicates itself on on running the football. If you find yourselves in situations where you need to come from behind it's a little bit harder to make up those plays with, you know, chunk yardage plays. So mistake free football will be a big one for Stony Brook on the offensive side of the ball. I think on defense, not only who's going to fill those shoes of the Kintressas, the Camaras and the Morrisons, but who's going to be the guy to get to the quarterback. They don't have many sacks on this team. They lost two of their only six from last year. From the Camara. They had 28 sacks in 2019, but only six of those 28 are on the current roster. So, they're going to find out who's going to be the defensive leaders, who's going to pressure the quarterback, and I would say tough to have a successful defense unless you're knocking down that opposing quarterback. So we'll see. And there's a lot of talent here for Stony Brook, just a lot of question marks that uh, we'll see hopefully answered soon enough. All right, Johnny, thanks so much for taking time and giving us such a great breakdown of the Seawolves, and we look forward to catching up with you as the season goes along. Not a problem. Looking forward to that home opener. Thanks, Rob. All right. Thanks, Johnny.